yeah hello friends so we will move on to a discussion on the mcqs and the question is it's a 60 year old woman presented with hearing loss palpital ringing in the right ear and deviation of the tongue to the right side so the mri reveals a mass in the right jugular fossa on examination what you find here is it's a palpital reddish mass which was seen behind the intact tympanic membrane so which of the following structures is inhibited by the mass so yeah so i'll repeat the question once uh, the question here is basically it's a ent question and the question here is it's a 60 year old woman who presents with a hearing loss palpital palpital ringing in the right ear deviation of the tongue to the right side mri mri is, is there you show there is a mass in the right jugular fossa and on examination you find it's a palpital reddish mass which was seen behind the tympanic intact tympanic membrane so yeah which of the following structures is inhibited by the mass and options here are is, is epitympanum mesotympanum hypotympanum or ck or mastoid so yeah anyone can tell what is the following which of the following structures is inhibited by the mass epitympanum mesotympanum hypotympanum or it's a mastoid so you have to know what a diagnosis here if you don't know anything otherwise you won't be able to tell anyone can tell what is the diagnosis here what is the tympanum what is the tympanum which has been inhibited by the tumor okay let's tell what what is the tumor tumor in this condition it's a glomus jugulare so in global jugular it invades the all about it is given that is it's a mass in the right jugular fossa palpital mass is seen behind the intact tympanic membrane so yeah just tell me that if it's a case of glomus jugular so where it will be invading that is it's a epitympanum mesotympanum hypotympanum or it's a mastoid anyone mastoid no it won't be invaded in the mastoid it's a hypotympanum yeah the given case scenario of hearing loss palpital tinnitus 12 kinetic nerve involvement and red mass otoscopy is a case of glomus jugular and then it's a hypotympanum so what are the this next we have it's a sexually active woman and with sickle cell anemia comes to a clinic for advice regarding contraception so which of the following is the ideal contraceptive for this patient options are progressive progesterone implant oral contraceptive pills copper iod or it's a barrier method so yeah yeah i would in panel was the right answer at that time so i repeat it's a sexually active woman with sickle cell anemia comes to your clinic and you for a contraceptive contraception so which of the following is ideally contraceptive for this condition so sickle cell anemia with asking for contraception so which is the ideal one progesterone implant oral contraceptive pills copper iod or it's a barrier method anyone anyone wants to answer this for patient with sickle cell anemia which one is the ideal contraceptive okay okay the answer here is a that is the progesterone implants are considered to be the safest in case of sickle cell anemia and yeah because the it's a low dose progesterone or progesterone injection here that is the a is the no no go see please down there it's a a is the right answer it is safe in pregnancy as well basically uh, progesterone has been known to prevent painful sickle cell crisis no barrier method here you can tell but if you want to be very specific and ideal then ideal is uh, it is progesterone implants but basically progesterone will prevent the uh, sickle cell crisis that is the most uh, complicated complication in basically in sickle cell anemia so yeah next question we have it's uh, in which stage of in which stage of sleep rk complex and sleep spindle seen options are rem stage 1 and rem stage 2 and rem or is it stage 3 and rem anyone wants to answer this which stage of sleep are k complex seen k complex and sleep spindles seen rem stage 1 rem or stage 1 and rem stage 2 and rem or stage 3 and rem anyone wants to answer let to remember this is really nrm2 yeah nrm2 is the right answer here 
So yeah, stage two in RM is basically yeah, it will be iron sleeve spindle as well as occasionally K complex will be there. So yeah, it's a they have a conceptual question, not conceptual, sorry, it's a factual question. Try to remember from which part it is. That's it's the alert alert wakefulness, relax wakefulness and all that in REM one two. So yeah. Next we have it's a study. Study has been conducted on anemia and pregnancy. So yeah, the study is conducted on anemia and pregnancy, and normal distribution curve with a mean hemoglobin is 10.6, and with a standard deviation is 2 gram per dl. So below what, below what level would 5% of the women in the group have their hemoglobin values? So yeah, it's 8.6 gram per dl, 7.31. Or uh, six point six, so it's a five. So yeah, anyone, it's a PSM question. If you know, then only can tell. It's a PSM question. I will just repeat. It's a study being conducted on anemia and pregnancy, and normal distribution curve with the mean hemoglobin level is ten point six gram per dl, and standard deviation two. Below what level would five percent of the women in the group have their hemoglobin values? Eight point six, seven point three one, six point six, eight five. See, uh, where are you from? Where matter actually? Uh, anyone wants to answer this? Okay, well, there is the answer is uh, B. That is seven point three one is the right answer here. Yeah, it's basically given data is uh, mean. What I told is ten point six percent, and standard deviation also I said it's a two. See, so, yeah, basically it's a formula that is mean minus two F two F D. So ten point six minus two, that is, it comes around six point six. So yeah, it's a basically it's a graph here. So in that graph, you know it is plus one and minus one as we write that. So you have to make a graph in this condition, and then within the graph, plus one and minus one as we have to calculate. So in that, it comes to that is seven point three one. So yeah, it's a PSM question. Okay, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next, we are here with a patient has decreased sensation over the medial part of the forearm around the elbow. So, which nerve root is involved here? C8, C7, T1, or C6? I repeat, a patient has decreased sensation over the medial part of the forearm. And yeah, it's a forearm and the elbow. So, which nerve root it is? C8, C7, T1, or C6? This is an easy one. I think we can tell this. You can also answer the C8, C7, T1, or C6. Middle part of the forearm and elbow. C8, no, no, no. C8 is no. Yeah, it's a T1. T1 is the right answer. Yeah. The C8 is basically it's in the hand. Yeah, it's in the hand. It's uh, basically it's the lateral part of the hand that is C8. It's not C8. The answer here is T1. Which is the medial part of the forearm and around the elbow. So yeah, it's a it's a full chart is there. Yeah. Okay. Next we have it's a given given below is an image of a histological section of the skin. Identify the structural edges. Options are uh, Merkel cell, mesenchymal corpuscles, Peyronie corpuscles, or it's a funny corpuscles. Okay, I can just tell it's a pathological question here, but yeah, how to show the image? Basically, I can just tell it's uh, I'll just tell the answer here because I can show the image here. So yeah, the answer is mesenchymal corpuscles, and mesenchymal corpuscles are basically to locate in the dermis, that is in the papillary dermis of the skin. So yeah, I cannot see much of this. Okay, it's corpuscles consists of a connective tissue. Capsule and a central core composed of a stack of flat modified swan cells. Okay, that's it. It's a part of the skin that is. Yeah, hello. Uh, next we have it's a 30 year old uh, truck driver who comes to you with a painless ulcer in the genital area. Then on examination, a single ulcer with an indurated base was found. An image of the tissue section is shown below. Identify the staining method. So yeah, yeah. Hey. So I repeat, it's a 30 year year old driver 
who presented with a painless ulcer in the genital area on examination you find that is a single ulcer with an indurated base was found and image of that is shown below basically it's a image of um, okay image is i guess still the image and it's a cord stream motility what they are showing here it's a cord stream motility which can be demonstrated on das yeah, it's a painless ulcer it's a painless ulcer yes it okay yeah. you are right it's syphilis only and uh, so yeah if we know the syphilis this tell me what is the screening method options are fontana's method leverity method cas castnera method or it's a albert's method anyone dark one microscope no it's a different it's a fontana's method leverity method cas and then or it's a albert method anyone wants to answer this okay i will not tell it's answer is b if you can if you know the answer it's b yeah it's a leverity method and yeah, as i said it's a painless ulcer so when you have a painless ulcer it's syphilis itself so yeah, that is right and syphilis you know it's a basically cause c d nahi hai a or b yeah it's a leverity leverity is the right answer here albert no b b b b b b b it's you have to remember this it's a leverity all of you are answering all a b c d no it's a b only it's a leverity itself and yeah, it says it's a syphilis as you know it's a drug by the treponema pallidum and yeah it's a painless ulcer that's why you can just it's a std that also you know so yeah it's a single painless ulcer with indurated base so yeah if you have a single painless ulcer with an indurated base so you have to think about syphilis and that here is leveritis method so yeah next question we have here is uh, in suspected a case of a bowel obstruction the presence of which of the following helps to distinguish the small intestine from large intestine okay and the options are appendicitis epiploesia valve connect on the conventions tinea coli or hostation yeah it's a uh, same topic mein meri sive question yeah okay it happens so this person is i think is very easy if you know if you have suspect a bowel obstruction the presence of which of the following helps you to distinguish between a small intestine from the large intestine and the options are appendicitis epiploesia valve con- conventions tinea coli or is the hostation so yeah small intestine from large intestine just tell me it's a it's a easy question i know but if you know it will be better for us so yeah anyone wants to answer this okay it's a b b See for neosyphilis uh, last last time only we discuss yeah what I remember is I think two days back only we discuss neosyphilis and yeah VDR was the the investigation choice what I remember it can be other but yeah VDR is the investigation choice for neosyphilis so yeah so yeah but where 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 we it's uh, how to distinguish small intestine from large intestine so yeah, our answer is B that is valve conventions is the right answer and yeah it's a uh, you can see it's a plaque circularis which is distinguish the yeah, vdrl of csf here so yeah, it's a valve conventions which is yeah, it helps to distinguish the small intestine from large intestine it's then they are the basically prominent mucosal folds uh, so yeah they are prominent mucosal folds seen in the cross examination of the small intestine and are also visible radiographically they are more prominent in jejunum so yeah it's a valve conventions next we have uh, next question we have here is uh, 40 year old woman is there who oh, treatment be alag hai yeah it's uh, please leave that question okay and your syphilis i know it is you are repeating it read it if you want so yeah we have here is yeah yeah this line personal treatment so yeah next we have it's a 40 year old uh, woman with a history of multiple sclerosis comes to the hospital So she describes she describes an electric shock like sensation a written down the back into the leg so what is the name of the sign that this also when we have discussed it in yesterday only we discussed this in multiple sclerosis what is the sign when you have a electric shock like sensation a written down the back into the leg and it's a name the sign that is a utsop phenomenon lehmite sign strances sign or it's a corneal sign So yeah, if we can tell this. No, no, I am not here for discussing the topic. Sorry, but if you want, you can read it. 
I just looked at I'm just doing a random I'm just doing a random MCQs. So yeah, B B yeah layer meter is the right answer here. So yeah, layer meter sign uh, you see there is the electrical sensation that is lifting from the back into the leg. So yeah, name of the sign is layer meter sign. See if I discuss uh, MCQs, it will take full uh, one hour. No one will be here only. I also won't be here. So yeah, next we have it's uh, it's okay yeah. Next we have a uh, woman at 36 year old. 30 is all yeah. What I'm doing? Okay, a woman at 36 with some gestation was brought to the clinic by her concerned husband. He mentioned that over the last few weeks he noticed her chewing on cardboard pieces and ice cream sets on multiple occasions. And on examination, pallor was present and hemoglobin was 8.6 gram per dl. What is the most appropriate? Treatment regimen Ferrous sulfate, red cell trans transfusion, ferrous sucrose, or it's a ferrous ascorbate. So, yeah, B was the right answer for the last question. And question is basically, I cannot just tell you in life. There's a little telegram, telegram group, I have just given the link in there. So, yeah, it's a woman with 36 weeks of gestation, and she was brought by her, she was brought to the hospital and he mentioned that over the last few weeks he noticed her chewing on cardboard pieces and ice cream sets on multiple occasions. So on examination pallor was present and hemoglobin was 8.6. So what is the most appropriate treatment for this condition? Ferrous sulfate, red cell transfusion, ferrous sucrose or it's a ferrous ascorbate. Anyone? It's a, it's a 36 sweet, no? yeah. This is occurs in children, pica, it's pica only, yeah. It's a moderate iron deficiency anemia. So you can just tell me what is the treatment for iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy. I will just repeat, ferrous sulfate, red cell transfusion, ferrous sucrose, or it's a ferrous ascorbate. Anyone? Okay, the answer is C. The answer is ferrous sucrose is the right answer here. See, basically it's a... Yeah, A, A, ferrous sulfate. See, ferrous sulfate you give orally, I think. Yeah, because here it is basically it has been a high it has. Since the anemia was diagnosed late in pregnancy, the most appropriate here we have to give a parental. So, yeah, if we give a parental, it will be iron, ferrous sucrose. Yeah, it is iron only. So, yeah, it's a ferrous sucrose in this condition. So, here parental iron given as IV infusion. So, yeah. And order is that you told that is ferrous sulfate. Next we have triangular facies is indicative of which of the following diagnosis? Russell Silver Syndrome, Down Syndrome, Mobius Syndrome or it's a Nephrotic Syndrome. Yeah, it's an easy one. I will repeat uh, triangular facies is indicative of which of the following diagnosis? Russell Silver Syndrome, Down Syndrome, Mobius or it's a Nephrotic Syndrome. Anyone? If you know. Russell syndrome, Russell silver, sorry, Russell silver, down, movies or nephrotic. Triangular faces in indicative of what? Okay, I will tell it's A, that is a Russell silver syndrome is the right answer. So, yeah, it's a clinical picture of that is a triangular faces is a clinical picture of Russell silver syndrome and yeah, it has what uh, it has starts, short stitcher, triangular faces, microcephaly, limp and facial symmetry, and fifth finger. Linodactyly. So it's a basically it's a uh, genetic disorder of chromosome number 11. So yeah, it's a uh, triangular facies is also seen in Allegheny syndrome. Yeah, A is the right answer. So yeah, it's uh, so yeah, the triangular facies is seen in Russell Silver syndrome as well as Allegheny syndrome. So you have to remember that. Next, we have a 45 year old Nigerian man hailing from an area endemic for river blindness presented with the given finding. What is the drug of choice for this condition? So yeah, I will just tell what is the... Okay, I will only... I won't tell a diagnosis here. Every time. Okay, the image is there. It shows a sclerosing keratitis of onchoceriasis or river blindness. So I just want a diagnosis. So yeah, I will just repeat in a diagnosis here. It's a case of sclerosing keratitis of onchoceriasis or river blindness. So what is the drug of choice here? It's... Um, Options like DEC, Ivermectin, Suramin, or it's a fluconazole. Anyone? DEC, Ivermectin, Suramin, or it's a fluconazole. 
Anyone want to answer this? Okay, uh, okay, I'll only tell it. Uh, see, the drug of choice here is answer is B. I will mention. And we are discussing what? It's a slurring characteristics of onchoceriasis or liver blindness. That is, I also don't know frankly, but yeah, we can learn that the drug of choice for slurring characteristics or onchoceriasis is B. Yeah, I will mention the right answer. Next we have yeah onchoceriasis I will mention yeah. So yeah, next we have post hepatic neuralgia. Is commonly associated with just with just of which nerve? Yeah, I will mention was the right answer. So yeah, I will tell uh, post carpatic neuralgia is commonly associated with just of which nerve? Dorsal, trigeminal, cervical, or axial lumbosacral. Anyone? This also we have discussed. Yeah, it's a repeated question. We have discussed this two days back. It's uh, basically it's a case of herpes just there, and they are just asking what what happens in post carpatic neuralgia. Now which nerve is involved? So dorsal, trigeminal, cervical, or lumbosacral. So yeah, if you can just tell the name, dorsal, trigeminal, cervical, lumbosacral. Okay, the answer here is MP. That is trigeminal. Yeah, trigeminal is the right answer. So yeah, is the right answer. I mean, it is frequently involved. Next we have a psychiatrist is there who is conducting the. Flostein test, okay. Flostein test as a part of psychiatric evaluation of a patient. What is the maximum score out of which the patient is has scored? That is fifteen, twenty five, twenty, or it's a thirty. Anyone? Basically, they are talking about MMNC. So MMNC is what uh, mini. What was that? Mini mental state examination. So what is the maximum score of a mini mental uh, test? Sorry, mini mental state examination. So you also know as the false test. So if anyone can tell, it's uh, 15, 25, 20 or 30. So you can tell the answer here. What is the maximum score here? Okay, okay. I'll only tell. It's a 30. So I'm going to say D is the right answer. So in MMSC, MMSC 30. Yeah, 30 is the right answer. So maximum score is 30 here. So yeah. So next we have it's an according to the revised strategy for eradication of kala ajar, which of the following drugs would you use across all age groups in order to reduce the human reservoir of infection? Metaphosin, sodium stevotluconate, liposomal amphotericin B or it's ivermectin. So yeah, now it was 30 and yeah, so we are discussing now a case of kala ajar. In kala ajar, Eradication, which of the following drugs would you use across all age groups in order to reduce the human reservoir of infection? So it's metaphosin, sodium uh, stevotluconate, liposomal amphotericin B, or it's ivermectin. So yeah. And sodium stevotluconate. Oh, no, no. Oh, and B. No, B is not the answer. Yeah, the answer here is. So yeah, the answer is C. B, 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 B. No, oh, no, no. 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 So yeah, see what we are telling is B sodium stevotluconate. No, no, it's not the answer. See, yeah, liposomal amphotericin B is the right answer here. So yeah, it's a, we give a single dose of intravenous liposomal amphotericin B for eradication of. That is, it is used for all age group and it reduces the human reservoir of infection. So yeah. See in uh, this uh, where, discussion what I was called. Kala is we don't use sodium stevotluconate anyway. Because yeah, metaphosin also we can use, that's why it's an oral drug. But yeah, we can use metaphosin with paramomycin for 10 days, but not that. So yeah, it's a C, that is liposomal amphotericin B used here. So yeah, avermectin is there, that is a D, but that is used for filariasis, we know that. Next question we have. Yeah, it's an interesting one. This one, uh, it's from the pathological image only, I can tell what is the answer here. Okay, but I will repeat, it's a question, it's a question is, a 20 year old male patient is diagnosed with AML. Okay, the peripheral smear shown in the below, that is the peripheral smear is shown in the below. The cell indicated by the arrow is best described as. Yeah. So, all odds, flaming promyelocyte, packard cell, or dusky promyelocyte. So, how should I tell you? I don't know. Okay, I'll just say what is there in the picture. The picture shows multiple all odds. Clustered together within a single cell, resembling a bundle of stits. So, what is this cell called as? It's a pathological image. You can just tell what is the cell called as. 
So yeah, if you want to know, I'll just uh, repeat it. It's a 20 year old with uh, CAML and the peripheral blood source, multiple all rods clustered together within a single cell resembling, resembling bundle of states. So the options are all rods. So it won't be there. It's a bundle of all rods. That's why it won't be there. Next we have flaming promyelocyte, pegot cell, or it's a dusky promyelocyte. See, A. A is not the answer because it's a cluster of all rods. I am also feeling sleepy now. So yeah, it's a cluster of all rods. So yeah, it's not A. It's uh, answer is C. That is the pegot cell is the right answer here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, pegot cell means it's a bundle of states. So yeah, the answer is C. That is pegot cell is the right answer. Next we have um, a patient presents to you with a 2.5 cm net swelling which is for non-tender and moves on and uh, moves from swallowing. So yeah, if there is a moves on swallowing, you know it's a thyroid swelling. I don't know to tell that. So yeah, we have TSH, T3 and T4 levels are normal. And an ultrasound was done which uh, reports the swelling to be cystic and regular with low suspicion for malignancy. So what is the next step of management in this patient? So the options are perform a fine needle that is FNAC, perform a radionuclide update test and prepare for reception of nodule or it's a DSC of the patient and monitor periodically. So I'll repeat it's a thyroid swelling in there 2.5 cm and which is for non-tender moves on swallowing. So TSS T3 T4 was normal and ultrasound source cystic and regular with the low suspicion for malignancy. So it's a benign condition. So what is the next step we will do? So perform a FNSE, perform a radio iodine update test, prepare for restriction of nodule, or just reassure the patient diabetes and monitor periodically. So yeah. Anyone? No, it was not Gandhi. <laughs> Anyone? A, uh, what you will do? A, B, C, D. So you see, they are, they are not confirming it. They are not actually confirming what they diagnosing here. Because TS, TSS, T3 and T4 is normal. That is, it's not hyper or not hyper. So don't know. And as per the USC, they are telling it's a low. Yeah, happiness is the right answer. So yeah. As per the USC also, it's uh, swelling to be cystic and regular with low suspicion for malignancy. So yeah, so you will perform a happiness here. So next question we have, yeah, no, 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 not B, it's a FNAC performed because you're suspicious basically, it's malignancy or not. Because in USD they have proven it's not malignancy, but yeah, you cannot be sure that much. So yeah, so yeah, next question we have, it's a 53 year old woman who underwent hip replacement surgery. A week after the surgery, the patient develops swelling of the leg associated with pain over on palpation and her heart rate is 70 per minute and there is a, no history of hemoptysis or significant weight loss and there is also no history of previous pulmonary embolism so what is the risk of developing pulmonary embolism in patient based on well score okay so your options are low high moderate cannot comment without d dimer values so yeah i can still uh, it's a i'll just repeat it's a 53 year old woman and who underwent hip replacement surgery a week after the surgery patient under develops a swelling of the leg associated with pain on palpation heart rate 70 per minute no history of hemoptysis or weight loss no history of pulmonary embolism so what is the risk of developing pulmonary embolism in a patient based on well score in this condition options are low high moderate cannot come out without d-dimer values so yeah if you can tell the answer here anyone Basically, you have to remember the well score. So, well score is a classification. So, in basically, well score, you consider all that. That if there is a clinical science of DVT 3, no alternate diagnosis 3. So, yeah. Basically, with all that for score, we get it here 7.5. So, yeah, it's a 7.5. So, it's a high score. So, you have to remember like that. See, if it's there is a full classification of in Welsh criteria, so I can't just tell all the classification. But yeah, I just remember there is a Welsh criteria for this, and I have to think based on that what it's a high, low, moderate, or cannot be. Cannot tell. Yeah. Next question we have it's uh, as per the MTP B2021. Induction of MTP is mentally in a mentally ill or a rape victim is allowed until what age of gestation? 20 weeks. 
ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी एट इट्स रिसेंट क्वेश्चन रिसेंट या रिसेंट क्वेश्चन सो जस्ट लिव इट एम टी पी बिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन इंडक्शन ऑफ एम टी पी इज इन अ मेंटली इल और रेप विक्टम इज अलाउड अंटिल वॉट इज ऑफ गेस्ट क्वेश्चन एंड आई रिपीट इट्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी एट विक्स एनी वन डेर लास्ट टाइम इट हैपन एनी वन हॉस्पिटल Okay, um, I will just tell the answer is uh, C. That is twenty four, which is the right answer because uh, for a mental ill or a rape patient, before it was like it was twenty weeks, but yeah, they are extended to twenty four weeks uh, last year only. So have to remember that because in twenty twenty one bill they have extended many things for consider the anomaly also they have extended to twenty four weeks. So yeah. Okay, last uh, five questions. It will. I will go fast now. What is the ideal size of the carbon dioxide absorbent granules? Options are one mess, two mess, three mess, or four mess. So it's a factual question again, but you have to tell if you know what is the ideal size of the carbon dioxide absorbent granules. One, two, three, four. That is mess. Anyone? Fast, fast. I think if I go slow, everyone will sleep now only. So yeah. Okay, the answer here is D. That is a four mess. So yeah, the answer is four mess. So basically, it is between four to yeah four to an eight. That is one point five to five mm is the right answer. So yeah, the question was what was the ideal size of carbon dioxide absorbent granules? And the answer is four to eight mess. So yeah, next question we have uh, patient who is, who started on lisinopril for hypertension is concerned about its adverse effects. So which among the following is not an adverse effect of a drug? This uh, guess what? Hypokalemia, neutropenia, or skin rash. Anyone? It's a lisinopril. So lisinopril, you know, it's a AC inhibitor. So if you have a patient with lisinopril, that is an AC inhibitor, and for hypertension, and you are concerned about the adverse effects. So which among the following is not an adverse effects? That is dysgenesia, hypokalemia, neutropenia, or skin rash. Anyone you want to? Anyone wants to answer this? AC inhibitor, which is not. Okay, now at last, I think no one wants to answer. I will tell. It's a B is right answer. See, hypokalemia is not an adverse effect. Well, huh? Well, there is a hyperkalemia. Yeah, I have to remember this. See, I will just tell what. Yeah, hypokalemia. Because here it will be hyperkalemia will be there in the AC inhibitors. So I'll just say what are the adverse effects. So the adverse effects are hypotension, hypo, hyperkalemia, not hypokalemia. It's hyperkalemia. Cough, angioedema, skin rash, teratogenicity, or it's a degeneration, or there is alteration in the or loss of taste. You can tell. So yeah, we will move on to the next question. So yeah, next we have it's a woman who was administered an intravenous opioid for managing post-operative pain. So within five minutes, she started developing severe redness and pruritus along the distribution of the vein into which the drug was in injected. So which of the following drug would be responsible for this? And the options are mepiridin, alpentanil, remipenetil, uh, or it's a pent penetin. Sorry, fentanyl. So yeah, I will repeat. It's a case of a, a woman who was administered an intravenous opioid for managing post-operative pain. Within five minutes, she started developing severe redness and pruritus along the distribution of the vein. Vein into which the drug was injected. So which of the following drugs would be responsible for this? Mepiridin. Alpentanil, remifentanil, or also fentanyl. Anyone? This is it's a adverse effect of. It's a adverse effect of. Anyone? Okay, I will only tell it's a adverse effects of. That is the A. That is meperidine, because meperidine is basically we have seen that histamine release will be seen in this condition meperidine. So there is a histamine release at that time. It will cause all that condition that is severe redness and pruritus. So yeah. That is, there will be muscle activ activation. So yeah, others we have given: see, codeine, morphine, hydromorphone, and this. What I told that is, that meperidine is associated with uh, histamine release. And yeah. So yeah, next question we have: it's uh, last two questions. Next we have tetrahydrobiopeptin is a coenzyme for which of the following enzymes? And the options are phenylalanine hydroxylase, tyrosine hydroxylase. 
tryptophan hydroxylase or it's all of the above so i know you like you we all like the question like this all of the above all of the above, all of the above. so yeah but the answer is that only it's actually all of the above here so yeah i will just uh, repeat it's a tetrahydrobiopectin is a coenzyme for which of the following enzymes and the options are phenylalanine hydroxylase tyrosine hydroxylase tryptophan hydroxylase and it's all of the above so yeah the answer is all of the above because it's a coenzyme for all the three enzymes what i said so yeah so you have to remember this uh, no choice next we have a gallium 67 scan was performed on a patient and showed the following picture so what is the diagnosis here see the picture is showing i will just tell it's a panda sign yeah so you can just tell uh, where do you see a panda sign and the options are wilson's disease sarcoidosis or oro maxillary carcinoma or lymphoma so yeah just remember where do you see a panda sign anyone it is due to symmetrical uptake of gallium 67 into nasal pharynx lacrimal gland and parotid glands so yeah well i will just tell you the answer here is sarcoidosis so you just remember you see the panda sign in case of sarcoidosis so you have to remember that one and there are other signs also see wilson wilson no wilson is not the answer here so the panda sign is seen in sarcoidosis and we have other signs also that is the lambda sign gallant sign or galaxy sign in case of sarcoidosis only so but yeah the yeah, last question for today the last question that is patient with which of the following can be classified under smoldering multiple myeloma options are lack of symptoms and a high plasma m component with plasma cell greater than 10% plasma cell greater than 10% in the bone marrow no para protein in the blood and presence of lactic bone lesion or it's a plasma cell greater than 15% in the bone marrow abnormal serum free light chain ratio and hypercalcemia or the last option is it's a presence of symptoms and a low plasma m component with a plasma cell less than 10% so yeah it's a very long question i don't repeat i will just tell the answer here if you i will just tell them. the question was which uh, patient with which of the following can be classified under smoldering multiple myeloma so yeah so the answer is uh, a i won't repeat all that again the answer is a that is it's a lack of symptoms and there is a high plasma m protein with plasma cell that is greater than 10% so yeah it is classified under the smoldering multiple my- myeloma less than 10 is the wrong it's a wrong less than 10 is the wrong one so yeah the answer is greater than 10% so there is a difference between smoldering multiple myeloma and multiple myeloma in multiple myeloma basically it's a symptomatic and whereas in this case it's a asymptomatic condition and yeah 10% uh, greater than 10% is basically in multiple myeloma but yeah in this condition yeah it was written 10% only it's 10 to 60% is there so yeah the difference between smoldering multiple myeloma and multiple myeloma is actually it's a symptomatic and asymptomatic and there will be m protein in the serum in both the conditions and plasma cells also will be greater than 10% in both the conditions and basically the main difference is there will be related relatively the that is related impairment will be seen in case of multiple myeloma but in small dose multiple myeloma there is no organ or tissue involvement here so yeah so yeah we are done with the mcq 25 so yeah thank you so much for joining and yeah take care bye